4 Grand Masters, only one winner. In this video I will be playing with other 3 Grand Master rank players who are blue, purple and green. I'm the red player in this game and we are playing 4 player fixed card game with balance blitz dice rolls. I have the most of the troops in Africa, so I think it will be the continent I go for. Or maybe even South America, well, the green player's turn is before me, so I'm pretty sure he will add his troops there. But no worries at all because I will be fine with Africa too. The blue player has moved out his troops from it at the same time making the alliance with me, so I think I should be good of holding it, especially with already having the alliance with the purple player too. I was pretty confident that the green player was indicating the blue player to use these three troops in South America to attack a territory, so the green player wouldn't have to waste his troops on that, but I was wrong. The green player has actually taken the blue player's troops and captured a one troop territory of purple. So I think there comes my opportunity guys. I think it would be worth to try taking South America from green. I think he was a little bit too fast trying to capture South America with me having quite a bunch of troops around it. So we will see how it goes guys. I think I have decent chances to take it from him, if he doesn't add any more troops into it. No South America, no win. It will be my motto today. I might be the South American hero this time. And I think I definitely will. I told my ally Blue to attack Green, so he cleared out all the Green's territories from Europe. So there's no way the Green player is going to have an advantage over me when it comes to capturing the continent. And yeah, he just added his troops in Asia, so I think here comes my time to shine. I'm the first player to get a continent, and it should give me some of the advantage. At least tell other players get continents too. But I should be pretty much guaranteed of not getting eliminated first anyways, assuming my allies will want to team up on someone rather than deciding to turtling boringly hoping that the dirty work would be done by someone else. But obviously when all the players in the game know the turtling secret, then this magic trick doesn't work anymore. As if everyone decides to turtle, then the game pretty much becomes the stalemate, and especially if the strongest player is using one of the turtling strategies too. If you're wondering why the purple player said good game and we all were laughing is because he knows the motto of no Australia, no win guys. Either get Australia at any cost, or lose the game. It's the logic a lot of noob players in the public lobbies use. But does that mean that I lost the game? Absolutely not. I'm wondering if the purple player has seen my South American tricks. So we will actually see whether it's no Australia or no South America to no win. I'm not giving up so easily. So anyways, when two players in a four player fixed card games get continents quite fast, then one of the best strategies for them is to team up, assuming they've both got similar value continents. So by teaming up on one of the players, they would make sure that none of them gets the 4th place. And also if they're lucky enough, they could even team up on both of their opponents dominating the game quite easily, so in this case the game could go really fast, and both of the teaming players would get the 1st and 2nd places for themselves. But by teaming up I don't mean that you should sacrifice yourself for your ally so you would get a guaranteed 2nd place or vice versa. No. What I mean is that teaming up should be mutually beneficial for both of the teaming players, meaning that they would be having equal chances to fight for the first place without any of them having a significant advantage against other. As remember, after all everyone stand for themselves. So if it equally benefits both of the players, then they can team up, but if it only starts highly benefiting only one of the players, then the alliance should be broken. You shouldn't let other player dominate the game easily even if it's your ally. So remember, the alliance between you should always be mutually beneficial, as otherwise the advantage will be taken over one of the sides. In 4 player fixed card game on classic map, to eliminate one of the players as soon as possible should be one of the main player goals in general in order for games not to drag out. The balance of the game could be perfectly sustained with only 3 of the players, so that should really make sense. And the most reasonable decision is to team up on the player who goes for the biggest continent, so basically either North America or Europe. 
teaming up could not be necessary by only two players, all three players could team on the fourth player. So like in the situation when one of the players got Australia, another one South America, and the third one Africa. But if possible it's good to prevent the third player from getting a continent as well. As for you and another player being the only players who have continents could be a very good advantage too. Your decision space of what you can do is much more bigger when you're one of the strongest rather than you one of the weakest. And it's logical. So this is why I team up with purple and don't let the green player capture Africa, he sent me an alliance request so I would move my troops from it letting him capture it. But would it be mutually beneficial if I let him do that? Not really, he would hold the continent getting 3 extra troops and not being so weak anymore, while I would have another strong opponent in the game, who might even start building a huge army of troops on my border. So if I moved out from Africa letting Green capture it, then it would only benefit him, while I would only get more struggle and my advantage wouldn't be as big anymore. So I would only let Green get Africa if I saw that one of the players become quite stronger than others so the balance of the game would stay sustained. So anyways, while I took care of green, the purple player took care of blue. Purple sent me an attack request to attack these players quite a bit more too. So I'm doing my part by clearing out the blue player from North America, I'm not capturing it though, because it would only be beneficial for me, while give a lot of disadvantage for the purple player if I was able to successfully hold it. So if I captured North America, then the purple player would be forced to break the alliance with me, so then we wouldn't be able to team up on the other players after not being the allies anymore, and that would possibly make the other players to catch up to us. So at the end both of us would end up losing the advantage. It would be a lose-lose situation for both of us. Anyways, I'm not really sure why the blue player is manual rolling the green player. Hmm as it's not really a situation in which three players team up on someone so they would guarantee to not get the fourth place for themselves, it is the situation where blue and green are both victims. And instead of destroying each other, they should have rather teamed up when it wasn't too late. I assume the blue player wanted to make sure that the green player would be the first player to be eliminated from the game, so when it became the three player situation, he would have become a decent opponent once again, since after one of the player getting eliminated I and purple would have to start fighting each other. But what actually the blue player did, is that he made the three player situation to be skipped, so that would be an instant end game between me and purple, as now both blue and green are basically worth to be taken out for their cards. Also I didn't notice while playing, but actually the purple player's turn was skipped this round for some reasons. But anyways, let's go guys. It's my time to shine, it's the show time. I think it will be more suitable to start from the blue player, but then I assume I should get the green player as well too. So let's trade in a set and finish dealing with this game for good. Well, to be honest I am not really sure how will it go for me with the purple player yet. But we will see. Should I really go for the green player though? Yeah, I think so, right? Let's go. Let's do it guys. Well to be honest I realized that I might fail so I stopped, as if I had failed, especially when it comes to the big blitz roll, then game would have been basically given away for the purple player. But the actual reason why I stopped is these Asian territories, I didn't want to make it too easier for the purple player in case I failed, and I saw it was really likely to fail for me at the end. So after all the green player was taken out by purple. But OMG guys. No dice, absolutely no dice. The purple player got really unlucky over here. Well, I'm wondering how it would have gone if he hadn't captured these extra territories in Europe. Hmm. I'm not sure. Do you think it was a mistake for the purple player or not? Well anyways, with the purple player getting a bad dice a huge advantage is guaranteed to me, right? Well anyways. With the purple player getting a bad dice a huge advantage is guaranteed to me, right? As you can see I made a mistake by unleashing purple's 5 troops in Africa, I wanted to have advantage blitzing his troops as an attacker, but I realized that then I most likely would have failed to invade him into Australia. 
so after getting a bad blitz roll crushing three troops in Europe, I should have just continued straightly capturing one troop territories without splitting three troops behind. But wow! OMG! Now the dice love the purple player. He has just taken down two my armies of five troops just only losing one troop by himself. But I still have a very good troops, territories and cards advantage. So I think I should not worry too much about, right? Well, I have no set at 4 cards. I think let's just capture 2 continents at once rather than Australia. So if the purple player wants to capture Australia, then he will have to add like 3 troops here for that one territory, so he will end up capturing less territories in overall. But it seems the purple player got unlucky to not get any set at all this time. So it seems the game ends here. Good game you all. I think it must be one of the shortest 4 Grandmaster games ever if not the fastest one itself. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, then I would recommend checking some of these out as well. Watching more videos will help you to progress so much faster. Highly increase your skills by simply watching risk videos.